Thank you for joining us again this week. I have an opening question for us. How are you at recognising road signs? Well, I hope if you're a driver, you are good at it. When I passed my driving test a few decades ago, just a small part of that test was demonstrating I understood and recognised road signs and other parts of the highway code. But these days, of course, potential drivers have to pass a written test first. Much more detailed knowledge has to be shown. Well, this week we're going to have an overview of our faith, what it means to live for Jesus, to follow Jesus. And to help us do that, we're going to use road signs. Our first sign, today's sign, is the U-turn. If you have a a sat-nav or you've ever driven with a sat-nav, you may have got fed up with the ones that constantly tell you to do a U-turn. Perhaps you've decided that you know a better way to go or a better direction to to drive in and you're met with a constant, patient instruction to, when possible, make a U-turn. When possible, make a U-turn. In the opinion of the device, you are going in the wrong direction. Now, I guess the start point of the Christian faith is that we, left to our own devices, are going in the wrong direction. In fact, we need to make a U-turn in our lives. Stop going one way and start going another. Let's read Mark uh, chapter 1, verses 14 to 20 to help us. Mark 1, 14 to 20. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother, Andrew, casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he'd gone a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Well, in Mark's Gospel, the author gets us right into the story. There's no fuss, no preamble, no shepherds, angels, wise men, no genealogies. Mark just takes us right into the thick of the action. And here we have the action of Jesus announcing the arrival of the good news. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent. Believe the good news. The very first words of Jesus. And then we get straight to the calling of the first disciples. Simon, we'll know him as Peter later. Andrew, James and John. Now repent is one of those religious words. I'm not sure we use the word in any other context of any other part of our lives. And perhaps for many, it has very negative images. Perhaps we have the image of a shouty man wearing a sandwich board, aggressively warning people that disaster is ahead unless they repent, say sorry for their personal sins to God. But repent, I think here in the language of Jesus, is much more than us saying sorry just for our personal sins, although that's an important part of it. True repentance in, in, our, in our Bibles, in the words of Jesus, is, is yes, being sorry, but it's also recognising the need for us to change, to go in a different direction, to go in Jesus's direction. And for me, we get to see something of what this word really means in the lives of our four fishermen. Their lives were heading in one direction, their own direction. Their lives were focused on their own perceived desires, their own needs, And then they met Jesus. This meeting literally turns their lives around. They were going one way. Their meeting with Jesus results in them turning away from their fisherman lives and heading in a new direction following Jesus. 
Instead of a life pursuing their own agendas, there is a U-turn and they are now pursuing a life with Jesus's kingdom agendas as their focus, as their purpose, as their own agenda for their lives. So have you and I made that U-turn in our lives? Have we met Jesus and allowed his message, his call to change the direction and focus of our life so that we're now going his way? And I guess most of us have done that, made that step in our lives at some point. But maybe there's some part of our life at the moment, your life, my life, where we need to make a U-turn over. Some part of our lives that we need to stop going our own way. And we need to make a U-turn and turn around and go in the help and the power of Jesus to go his way. That's a challenge for us. And I'm going to pray for us now. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the challenge of this opening passage in Mark, the challenge to repent and to say sorry and to change direction to go your way with our lives. Father, many of us have made that decision in the past. We've become your followers, just like uh, those first fishermen responded to your call. We've changed direction. But we recognise there might be some areas in our lives where we need to do that now. We need to to repent, say sorry and change direction with them. Father, give us the courage to do that. Show us through your son how we need to make those changes and help us to repent and turn around and go in your way in all areas of our life. We thank you for Jesus that we are invited to this most exciting life, the same life that Peter and James and John and Andrew were called to follow. We thank you for your calling on our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. May God bless us this day. Oh, I see signs and I see wonders. I see birds of living colour. Dead things coming back to life again. I believe there's about to be another resurrection. We are